Hey guys, Tech Rally here, and welcome to the fourth lesson of learning Blockstack with React. The fourth lesson that we're going to be working on is creating a login button and working on that implementation using the Blockstack library. But before we move on to fully implementing this process, I kind of wanted to show you the overall application and how it's supposed to work. The, if you go to the website that uh, will be linked below, you can just enter this and then it's going to give you the uh, option to sign in with your Blockstack um, ID. So if you click sign in with Blockstack, it's already pre-configured to my um, ID. So all I have to do is just click on this. And then once I sign in, it's going to be going to my admin page with my specific profile name. And with this part, I have the ability to create posts or explore other people's posts. Since no one's really using this application, there probably isn't many other IDs that you can really check out, but you have the ability to create a post. So if I click create post and type in first post here, and then I say, this is my first post, check it out. And click submit. Then it's going to be going into my admin post list, which is going to be a table full of your own uh, user IDs post. And with this, you have the ability to edit, view, and delete a post. So if I click edit, it's going to give me this edit option. If I view, then it's just going to give me a view option. And then you, you could go back to your profile. And in the explore users post, this is going to be more of like a public profile list of posts. So if I type in my ID here, um, the intention here is that it's no longer an admin page, but more of a just a public user, public IDs post. So with this, I know that the ID of my post is this, and then this is the title of the post, and I could just view it here. All right, let's go back to our code. Before we run our server locally, I want to add one more file called the .env file. And in the .env file, I'm going to write some code called notepath equals src. And with notepath equals src, it allows us to use absolute path when importing files. So in our app.js, we could get rid of the dot slash. Let's go back to our iterm and run our local server to see if it's working. Let's run the npm run start command. And what we should be expecting from this page is the same web page with our React Bulma button component that we have from the previous lesson, and it looks like it is. Let's go back to our code and write some additional logic to start working in the sign-in page. So app.js will be the component that determines whether or not we show the sign-in button for blockstack.js. But before we create that kind of logic, I want to add one more um, folder that will make our development life a little bit easier, and that will be called a utils folder. And generally in a utils folder, you want to keep some kind of utility functions or variables that you feel that are needed throughout the parts of the application. And specific for me, I'm going to add a constants file. And in the constants file, I'm going to uh, export one constant variable. The constants variable that I'm going to uh, export is the app config. But first we need to import an uh, app config object from block stack and we're going to be exporting a constant called app config camel cased and it will initialize it with store write and publish data if you need more information on what the store write and publish data is i would highly recommend going to the block stack js documentation but in short, store write provides the user to have write privileges and publish data allows the data that you are writing to be viewable by other users. Let's go back into app.js. Now that we've created an app config variable in constants.js, we can import that variable in our app component. So let's do it that this way. App config from utils constants. And since we configured our .env variable to include absolute path, this should work perfectly fine. One more import that I'm going to do is the user session from Blockstack. And this is the main information that we need to start creating our user session for from a Blockstack perspective. And like all components, it's going to have an initial state. 
So in this case, we're going to call our initial state variable for our session call as user session. And we're going to initialize it with the user session object that we've imported from block stack. And we're going to be passing in the parameters of app config. So essentially what we're doing is we're initializing this component at, with a variable called user session and give it the configurations of store write and publish data. Let's console log that information into the browser and see what kind of information comes up when loading the page. Let's go to the browser and see what comes out from the user session output. In the user session output, you'll have two keys, one that's app config and one that's store. For, for us, let's look at the app config. And in the app config, you'll notice that the scope is scoped to store, write, and publish data. What this means is that, like before, we're going to have the ability to write data and publish our data. What's not really shown in here are the other functionalities that user session has, such as is the user signed in, sign in a user, get the files of that specific user, and additional things that will really make our block stack application a little bit more powerful. But we're going to be going over that in this lesson, so don't worry. <laughs> and like I said before, there's the block stack documentation if you need to really deep dive into just what kind of arguments these functions take, etc., etc. But for now, let's go back to our code. So now that we've seen what is output from the user session, let's do a little bit of logic to either show the sign in button or the sign out button. So first, I'm going to erase the console log and destructure the state. And here, we're going to write, we're going to create two button components here, but we'll wrap it in a in a ter ternary operator. So if the user session dot is user signed in, then we're going to show the first button of sign out. Otherwise, we're going to show the button of sign in. So what this is saying is that if, if the user is signed in, then we want to give that user the ability to sign out. If the user isn't signed in, then we want to give him the uh, the ability to sign in. And then we're going to add a on click handler here. We'll call this dot handle sign out. And here we'll on click this dot handle sign in. And for now, we'll create two different functions: handle sign in. console.log handling sign in and another one called handle sign out and here we'll console.log handle sign out let's see if the buttons work first and then we'll move forward in terms of the actual logic so opening the browser after we made those um, two button changes you'll notice that since we aren't actually signed in um, there's going to be a sign in button and when we click on that right now you can see the console output handling sign in but instead of just console logging out the output let's add some logic to handle the block stack browser sign in page in the handle sign in page what we're going to do first is destructure the user session from the state and after we do that we're going to use that user session to um, handle the sign in so we're going to call this function called redirect to sign in and this should give us the ability to sign in our users now if i open up the browser here and i click sign in we get an error it says fail to fetch information about the app requesting authentication please contact the, the app maintainer to resolve the issue i'm going to put a pin on this until the next lesson and we can go over in detail about why this error is happening but for now we we had a really glimpse perspective of the user session object and the potential functionalities attached to that object. Um, for the next lesson, we're going to finalize the login functionality and also implement the sign out button. I hope this lesson was insightful and showed you a glimpse of the Blockstack.js library.